right. turned out not to be. That's pretty ironic. Really spooky. <laughs> Similar, he describes it. And perhaps most hurtful, it gives tormentors a sense of permanence as the ugliness takes on a life of its own and is available on one part of the internet as soon as it's taken down on another. It gives tormentors a cloak of anonymity where in mere minutes they can fake their identity or steal yours to harass your children online. I think we've all seen bullying. Perhaps we felt it firsthand when we were children. You know, maybe there was the kid that you wanted to avoid so he wouldn't smash you into the locker in the hallway. Maybe we found nasty notes crumpled near our desks. But cyber bullying takes bullying onto a whole new level, if you pardon the cliche. It gives tormentors a wider stage where not just an entire class, but entire world can see that crumpled nasty note and the ugly pictures. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Well, to a 10 and 12 year old, you know, names do hurt. Uh, the, the problem we have also is the fact that by the time I get involved, by the time the police get involved, we already have a victim. Someone's already being bullied or cyber bullied. You know, that's really too late. You know, what, we, we, what we need to do is strive to get to the point where we have you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We need to, I'm, I'm gonna be full of cliches tonight, more than likely. Uh, <laughs> you know, what we need to do is get out in front of this thing as parents and instill a code of ethics in our children that we've taught them right from wrong as far as you know, thou shalt not kill if you, and stuff like that. Well, we haven't taught them how to act when they're online in general. You know, not to hack into people's you know, computers, that sort of thing, but also not to, not to bully. Instant celebrity. The, the thing about the internet today is, and I think there's a lot of kids that uh, they're, they're innocently putting stuff out there because it gives them just a little bit of attention. So I throw my stuff out there online and instantly I get attention from all of my peers because I just dissed somebody. And one of the things that it does is it just puts them in the spotlight and they don't really realize in that moment <coughs> how much did you really, really, really hurt that person that you did that to. 10 minutes and we created a whole identity. Somebody photoshopped this photo, put somebody else's face on this less than flattering picture. Um, you can see that even in her employer section, there's something lewd written and you know, the about me is filled out right here, um, more obscene things, and even a phone number. So me and Michelle, we went on people's form springs in the community and we found um, actual comments. The comments that are on the form spring, keep in mind they are pretty graphic and they get um, really vulgar. <coughs> these are actual comments. We did not make these up. We found these if these were what people are actually saying to other teenagers. So this is like the first ones, it's like, oh my god, you're so stupid, you have an ugly face, I hope you die. A lot of what the girl said um, I heard over and over again in my uh, blog comments today. One was very interesting. Uh, this woman was recently in a conversation with 22 sixth graders and the topic was Facebook. Eight were allowed to have an account as long as mom or dad were friends. The other 14 were not allowed to have accounts because mom or dad deemed them too young. All 22 of the sixth graders had Facebook accounts under fake names, even the ones with permission. So she put out the question for all you parents that say, I don't allow my children to have an account, go ask your children, go check your computer, make sure you know what they're doing online.